This video contains a massive spoilers about Dead Cells. If you haven't played this game and you want to play it, then don't watch this video. The Pure Nail in Hollow Knight is a very unique weapon. Not only you can fight enemies with it, but you can also survive spikes with it. And you know, I'm all for original weapons in games, but wouldn't it be cool if we have a weapon like this in a other game? Well... In Dead Cells, we have the Pure Nail. And it is also a unique weapon in this game. To my knowledge, this is the only weapon you can upstrash and downstrash with it. And if you do either of those two, you do critical damage, which is a very nice. I'm going to show you a run with this weapon on 5BC. That is hell difficulty. This is custom game, so I can show you how good the Pure Nail is. For the rest, everything is the same. No assist mode on or whatsoever. So if you die, you die and you have to start all over again and with that being said let's get into the gameplay the prisoner quarters is one of the best level invented in video games except well it's not however this random generated biome was very awesome for me normally you have two scrolls here and well th that's kind of it but this time this time we also have a curse chest. I didn't know that this was possible in this biome because I have never seen one here. From a curse chest you get a scroll, a colorless item and a necklace with scroll sets. But on the other hand you are cursed and if you get one single hit while you are cursed, well you die. But the trade off is worth it in my opinion because you will get the chance to do more curse chests in other biomes and all that combined will make you a lot stronger because this game is high risk but also high reward and i'm all for that there was also a challenge rift here you will get a scroll stat and a necklace here as well however here you have to survive a maze full with traps if you get hit here you will not die in one hit but it's still a, a lot of damage i ended up with six brutality scroll stats in total after this biome the reason i picked brutality is because the pure nil is a brutality weapon and only does more damage if you level up brutality and after this biome we will go to the toxic sewers all the second biomes are cool in my opinion. I like the Arbitrium the most, but that is a biome that is more suitable for ranged weapons in my opinion. And yes, I also have throwing knives, but the main damage source is still the pure nail. There are three scroll fragments in total in this biome, and if you gather four, you will get a extra scroll, which is introduced in 4BC, which is uh, very nice. In this biome, you have two scrolls of power and two dual scrolls. With the dual scrolls, you have to be lucky that your preferred stat is in it. If it's not, it is not that big of a problem, since the other stats will give you a health boost. By the way, in the left corner, you see a green icon with a chicken leg. That is a mutation. I chose Gastronomy and it gives you more health if you find food. It is in my opinion a S tier mutation which is really helpful because health resources are really rare in this game. This biome can be tricky, all of the enemies are in my opinion really difficult, even the smaller ones, but the rampages are the most dangerous because if they attack they are so damn quick that you can be dead in an instant. And also in Toxic Sewers we were very lucky because it has also a challenge rift. I am not good in those so here you can see my wonky platform skills. And after this biome, we go to the Corrupted Prison. The Corrupted Prison is a biome that you don't even have to go to. You can legit skip this one since it has no scrolls of power here. So, why would we go here anyway? Well, as you might have seen already, there is a cursed chest here. And this is always here. So technically, there is a scroll here. And more power is something that you need in this game. All the enemies are tough here, but the enemy that I hate the most in this game are the Inquisitors. Man, I hate the hell out of them. They shoot through walls, sometimes off screen, and they will get me the most. That really says something about me, but you know, 
it is what it is. The birds are also very tough in my opinion. They are a little bit tanky and a very quick with their attacks. So using skills on them is a, a very good idea. This biome is a lot smaller than a toxic sewers. For my second mutation, I picked initiative. It does extra damage on an enemy for your first attack. I was really hoping that there was a challenge rift here and well, there was. I really recommend that you always do this exo biome because if I didn't, I would have two brutality scrolls says less and after the rift we move on to toxic sewers and oh boy Okay, don't get me wrong, I like this biome, but I think this is one of the hardest in the game. Ramparts is much easier and also has 4 scrolls of power and 2 dual scrolls. So why are we going to Ancient Sewers? Because Ancient Sewers has 5 scroll fragments and Ramparts only has 2. Also, this biome has tier 9 weapons that you can earn slash buy. And Ramparts does not have that, so that is the other big advantage of going here instead of Ramparts. Ramparts does have a food shop that can be a very very useful. For this biome, I choose combo as my third mutation. It is a S tier mutation in my opinion because it does 24% more damage for 8 seconds after killing an enemy. When you power up with more scrolls, it will do even more damage. Also, that orange bar that you see in the bottom of the screen is called the malaise. The more enemies on the map, the faster it fill up. Once it got to two bars, the enemies from other biomes will spawn in. Clearing almost all enemies and elites will decrease this bar. Food shops and defeating bosses will also help to decrease the malaise. But taking infected food will increase the malaise. Yes, some food is infected. How nice. In this biome, I will pick up a face flask as one of my skills. The only thing it does is 5 damage to the player completely useless right well actually it is a really powerful but i explain that when we come to the first boss we leave this biome with 17 scroll stats i am happy with that although i was hoping for a challenge rift in this biome but it wasn't here we cannot complain though we already had two curse chests and three challenge rifts so that is not that bad and with that being said we go to our first boss and that is conjunctivius the first boss is Conjunctivius. She is not that hard, but she's just, you know, annoying. How this fight works is you damage her until she's going to summon her tentacles. When they are defeated, we can damage her again. In total, there are two tentacle phases. One of the mutations I picked here is a Vengeance. With this mutation, you do 76% more damage for 8 seconds and a min 30% damage taken for 3 seconds after being damaged. And that's where Phase Flash comes in. This counts as being damaged and will activate the perk. After we beat Conjunctivius, we get a bunch of scroll fragments, some money, and I will go to Graveyard as my next biome. Graveyard is my favorite biome. I call this my chill biome. The enemies are not that bad in this biome and the malaise is really easy to handle. It is gone in no time and there's also a food shop here. This biome has two halves. The most enemies are in the first half and the second one has a cursed chest. Yes. There's always a cursed chest here. That sounds scary because we are more than 20 minutes in now. So it would be a damn shame if we got hit while we are cursed. The problem with the cursed chest is that you mostly will find this until the end. Where there are not enough enemies left to lift the curse in this biome. However, in this level, luckily, this was not the case. 
Oh, by the way, uh, after the first boss, a Predator is a great mutation to use. It makes you invisible for 2.7 seconds after a melee kill, and you can crank this up with scrolls to a max of 3.5 seconds. Good for mobs, but not so good for bosses. There are a lot of traps here, so if you're doing this for the first time, a magic chest is a great mutation to pick, since it caps your max damage to traps at max 10%. At the end, we can go to three other biomes. The most popular is Cavern, but I always go to the Forgotten Sepulchre. So let's go. This biome is like a Schrodinger's biome for me. It is hard and not hard at the same time. The easy part are the enemies because at this point with brutality you can one shot the mobs. The harder part is that yes there is another cursed chest here which I always take. Also you can stay in the dark for a long time otherwise you will get damaged and after this biome it is time for a boss fight. Well actually there are two bosses in a row, so you want as much health as possible. To this point, I didn't mention this, but in the left corner you see a health pot. You can heal up four times, each heal is 60%, unless you have certain mutation equipped like dead inside. But I want to save those heals until we are at the next boss. Also, when you see that yellow skull next to the green bar, it means we have a 60 streak. That means we can open a door with good level items. And in this biome, it is also a good idea to buy some weapons from vendors. They are tier 10, have some great synergies with your skills, and really helps to make the next boss fights easier. And I got to mention this, that Cavern, the other biome, has tier 12 weapons and skills. But that biome is a lot more difficult in my honest opinion. And with 29 scrolls we go into the next fight and that is the giant. In short, how the giant works is that he has two hands with health bars. When you defeat one of them, it will spawn an eyeball and that is where you do damage. When his health bar is at 50%, he goes into phase 2 where he has some other attacks. Normally you will stand on the hand to do damage, but with pure nil you can just slash upwards. This fight was a terrible fight for me, but as you will see, in the end, we made it through. And that was the giant. So now we can decide to go to a biome or straight to the hand of the king. I chose to go to the hand of the king. The hand of the king is a hard boss and still to this day I have a little bit of a problem when it comes to this fight. But I have gotten better at this fight and even did it flawless on 5 PC. This boss has a lot of range and this dude has traps in his arena. What a eh, not so nice person. In this fight I had to take a sweet little sip of my potion because otherwise I would be in a lot of trouble. And that was the hand of the king. Now, if you're watching this and you want to play Dead Cells yourself, turn this video off right now because a mega spoilers are incoming. This biome looks intimidating as hell, but actually it is not so bad. In short, here's what you gotta do. First, you find the elite for a Allen key. Then you find a other elite for the elevator key. Doesn't have to be in this order. Then you fight your way down alongside this building. Then you enter said building with the Allen key. Then you fight your way up in this building. And when you are up, use your elevator key. Then you fight or cheese the two elites for two other keys.
And then we can go to the true final boss. And this is the final fight for this run. The true final boss is hard as hell, but you can also be overpowered as hell. I will let you watch this fight without talking, because if I have to explain this boss, we will sit here until next Christmas. And boom! Final boss defeated. Thank you so much for watching me and supporting me this year. Have a wonderful Christmas or whatever day it is. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.